Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of No Place But Home. My name is Lou Zaccarella. I'm a founder of the Intelligent Community Forum, coming to you today from uh, New York City, my home. Uh, we're recording this on uh, April 28th, 2020. It's been 47 days since the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. In New York State, where I live, it has been uh, 59 days since the first case of the coronavirus here. And the number of new daily hospitalizations uh, in the state of New York fell to one, under 100, or, I'm sorry, under 1,000 for the first time in several weeks. So uh, that is actually progress. Today, April 28th, uh, the total number of coronavirus deaths was 335 uh, as reported by, by the governor, uh, Andrew Cuomo. The total number of deaths in New York uh, as of 11 o'clock this morning was 17,638. Um, this afternoon, the um, Air Force Blue Angels, the jets that uh, do acrobatics in the air, uh, flew over New York City on, in support of the healthcare workers, the healthcare workers who could came out onto the streets along with uh, the citizens of New York and the planes flew over uh, in their honor. So uh, there was a morale boost uh, that was given this afternoon. However, we're going to a place where it is very different today, uh, the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Uh, the world looks very different there, uh, fortunately. Uh, the Sunshine Coast is a, a place of, of beaches and um, sun, and it is a, a, a terrific place uh, to be. For the second consecutive year, the Sunshine Coast uh, in Queensland was named to the list of the world's top seven intelligent communities. That community, as uh, many of you know, has been undergoing um, a change in its economic formation. It has a 20-year plan, uh, which is pointing it toward the future, and uh, we will be talking a little bit about that today, if possible, with uh, the mayor, Mr. Mark Jamison. He's been the mayor of the Sunshine Coast Council, which is, by the way, the fifth largest uh, government, local government in Queensland since 2012. Uh, it, he was reelected for a second term in 2016 with 76% uh, of the vote. And a few days ago, he was elected for his third term. So he is reshaping the uh, Sunshine Coast economy, strengthening community programs and building on the region's uh, environmental credentials. But uh, he enters his third term, as many political leaders do, with a unique challenger, COVID-19. Uh, although, as of a few days ago, there were fewer than 100 cases in the Sunshine Coast, and we were all very happy to hear that. Um, Mayor Jameson was with us last year in New York, and he's with us today from Australia. Mayor Jamison, welcome and uh, congratulations on being re-elected to a third term. Thanks very much, Lou. It's a pleasure to join you and to uh, share with uh, our other colleagues around the world just what's going on here in Australia and particularly on the Sunshine Coast. So uh, uh, if we can help one another work our way through COVID-19 and get to the other side in better shape, then that's a good outcome. Well, I hope so. From your mouth to God's ears, as they say. Um, uh, where, where are you physically right now? I'm physically in my office in Caloundra, which is the sort of one of the major southernmost uh, suburbs on the Sunshine Coast, uh, known as the City of Beaches. And uh, of course, it's uh, about 20 to 8 uh, on uh, Wednesday morning here. Uh, and uh, but it's great to join you. And uh, you know, we really feel for our our friends in uh, in New York in particular. You've had a very tough time uh, with COVID-19, and uh, that's, uh, that's very sad for us all to see. Well, thank you. And we appreciate your help. And, um, you know, we, we consider you an honorary citizen of New York. Um, I mentioned that you don't have um, more than 100 cases of coronavirus, as we understand it. Um, has there, um, is there a plan in place? What is, what is going on with regard to the COVID? Is it a central issue uh, in your administration today? Yeah, look, it's, it's very important. Uh, despite those relatively low, low numbers, Australia, the state of Queensland, and the region of the Sunshine Coast is uh, very dedicated to protecting uh, the lives of our citizens and the livelihoods of our citizens. And that, I guess, is the great challenge. 
Uh, the, the number of confirmed cases is only 92. Uh, five of those remain active and we've actually only lost one individual uh, to COVID-19. Uh, in the state of Queensland, our, our numbers are only a little over a thousand. And largely it's been uh, aligned to people returning from overseas travel, which perhaps does highlight, you know, one of the great advantages of our geographic isolation and our ability to close down our borders fairly promptly. Um, and, and that, you know, has assisted people in overcoming their fear of what is the great unknown, of course. Um, and, and many of your viewers will be aware that, you know, Australia's had a tough time already this year. We had uh, significant fires, followed by significant floods, followed by COVID-19. So this will go down as a, a year to remember for probably all the wrong reasons. That certainly will. Um, what have been the biggest challenges with regard to the, the COVID-19 breakout? Has it, has it intersected at all with uh, healthcare management and management of the economy of the city, or is it sort of a separate element right now that you have to deal with as, uh, as you begin? Well, look, it's been all encompassing really, and uh, COVID-19 has taken, has been front and centre. Um, uh, the lockdowns have seen a lot of businesses put under enormous pressure. Uh, at a federal level, our government has done, an, I think, an incredible job in continuing to prime the economy by putting the JobKeeper program in place, which essentially ensured people could continue to employ their employees, even though their businesses weren't open, on, on the basis that that relationship will carry on through uh, COVID-19. Uh, we've uh, flattened the curve out very well, I think, uh, by having a strong focus on social distancing in particular. Uh, and that has seen us at a point now where this weekend we will see a number of uh, restrictions lifted that will allow people to you know, get back out and about, not necessarily be confined to home, still uh, exercising social distancing and uh, other important uh, health-related procedures that have become the order of the day. Uh, but, uh, I, we, you know, we, we're, in, we're in better shape. We've been obviously very conscious about perhaps reopening some of those facilities too soon for fear of a second wave. Uh, but uh, the big test will come for us this weekend. Mayor, was there, is there a phased plan or is it just going to, to open... Um... No, it'll it'll be with the social distancing, yeah. Yeah, no, it'll be a phased plan. Uh, there's a certain number of facilities that will open this weekend. Uh, people will be allowed to move around again within a 50 kilometre radius of their homes. So it still means our community um, will largely be confined to members of uh, the Sunshine Coast community and we won't be, uh, won't be seeing an influx of you know, new tourists any day soon, uh, uh, as people will, from Brisbane to the south in particular, will still be limited to uh, their geographic area. Um, I mean, we've, our, our hospital system has coped very well. We, we geared up with an expectation of a much bigger pandemic than we've actually had. Uh, so we're now getting a lot of those facilities back to normal in terms of their elective surgeries and various procedures that uh, have been put off as well. Um, so I think our, our health system, is, uh, as has been seen around the world, uh, has worked uh, very well and everyone's extremely grateful for the contribution that people, uh, members of the health services sector have made. Yeah, well, that, that's really good to hear. Um, in our situation, we had the, the big Navy ship, the Comfort, that had pulled in 12 operating rooms, an enormous hospital. That's, that's actually left the city. So we also uh, did not get as overwhelmed as we thought. So. Uh, we share that. Um, with regard to a pandemic plan, your, um, your colleagues in Dublin, Ohio, um, had one as far back as 2011. They were uh, eminently prepared for something like this. Um, did you have a, an actual pandemic plan? Was it part of your process? Yeah, look, we have um, a local disaster management group that reports through to a, a district disaster management group and then ultimately to the state of Queensland disaster management coordination group that's chaired by our Premier. Um, and I'm the chair of the uh, Sunshine Coast Local Disaster Management Group. And we run a lot of simulations and planning around all sorts of challenges. 
uh, more often than not, they're to do with natural disasters like cyclones or uh, serious flooding or fires, um, or maybe even major uh, traffic or rail accidents with uh, highly um, dangerous chemicals and the like. But we, we have had a pandemic plan and that did uh, serve us well. It meant we were quickly able to, to adjust uh, and, um, and, and uh, put necessary warnings in place, obviously taking advice from our national cabinet, which is a combination of the prime minister and the state premiers uh, and the uh, um, uh, chief executive officer of uh, uh, Queensland Health, who also provided a lot of uh, regular updates and support. So as a consequence of that, um, you know, we were able to move uh, very quickly. Uh, and uh, I think the, the, the limited number of infections uh, is a clear demonstration that uh, what we've put in place has been very successful. Uh, indeed. Um, you know, you guys are sort of famous for, in the ICF circles, for, you know, looking around the world, taking best practices, you know, bringing them home and uh, implementing the ones that you think are best. Have there been any best practices related to the COVID-19 crisis that you've looked at around the world or in the ICF network and said, you know, we, we should be thinking about this or even uh, may have implemented? Well, there's probably two things. One is in terms of the health impact, the, the importance of social distancing. Uh, and that's, that's been challenging for people because Australians like to shake hands and hug and, uh, you know, have that personal contact. So that's been a, a major, um, re, a major issue of relearning for, for many people. Um, so I think that's uh, that's one thing. And the other thing is uh, the rapid adoption of new technology, uh, as people have realised that well, we can't get together. So what other facilities are available for us? And whilst many of these um, uh, programs have been available for a long time. This has really given people a sense of urgency around upgrading their skills. Clearly, lots of people have been working from home. Uh, and I guess we're still to assess perhaps the efficiency rate of some of those things. But it certainly has meant that uh, people have felt safer, uh, particularly council employees who you know, we regard as uh, the guardians of our community. Uh, but they live and breathe like everybody else and therefore are also at risk of, uh, of the infection. So I've been very, very happy with uh, the, uh, the way in which our communities responded. But, you know, you, you said something there. Uh, there. We're finding that there are a lot of ideas that have been sort of lying around for 10 years. Of course, at ICF, uh, communities like yours have been talking about how to use broadband more intelligently. Uh, and it seems like this, even though it's a crisis, is an opportunity to for some of those good ideas to come forward in society. And you seem to be suggesting that that's taking place in the Sunshine Coast as well. Um, but have you established any task force or have you seen the levels of collaboration in areas like technology, education, uh, security and others sort of take a different tone or a different tact or is it just for the purposes of communicating more efficiently with citizens? Well, no, I think uh, the communicating with business has been very important to us. And uh, we've had specific COVID-19 communications bulletins uh, that have been reaching more than 3,500 businesses and, and some 10,000 businesses have been uh, assessing our specialist information online. Uh, business virtual roundtables with chambers of commerce, industry groups and ambassadors have proven very important. And indeed, communication with our community, uh, online video and news bulletins to keep people up to date, daily media calls about what people should do and what they shouldn't do. Um, and that, that's been very reassuring for people, even facilitating access to other sources of information, experts in business, government agencies, to ensure that there is access to relevant and factual information, uh, constant updates of our websites, social media platforms, uh, have all contributed to, I guess, people getting the right information and not being uh, taken off down the misinformation trail, which can often uh, have an impact on times like this. Uh, we've done regular uh, briefings amongst our senior staff at, councils every day, at council every day, and also the application of Microsoft Soft Teams uh, 
uh, online meetings, Zoom, uh, and, and a range of other facilities have been very, very helpful. Uh, probably what's, what's important also is the, the messaging and uh, things like COVID kindness, which we launched early on uh, to say to people, look, yes, this is a, this is a pandemic. Uh, it's got some serious health challenges with it, but here's a range of things that we as a community can continue to do online to keep people connected, to make sure that your neighbours who may be elderly are being looked after well. Um, and that, that has also, I think, um, in, um, enlivened you know, a, a sense of community that perhaps uh, in some ways has been overcome by the pace of life that uh, we, uh, we endured up to this time. That's, and that's a very good point, Mayor. Um, the issue of trust you know, it can, can sort of drift away from even a municipal government uh, because of, as you say so accurately, the pace of life. And what happens in a crisis we find is that, especially a healthcare crisis, is that misinformation gets out there very, very quickly today because everything is amplified, right? Every citizen is amplified. Um, did you find that you needed to contain misinformation? And if so, um, were you able to do that quickly and then reestablish that trust? Yeah, look, I think we, we established ourselves early on as the reliable and trusted voice of the community. Uh, and the traditional media uh, have been very supportive of that. And the uh, online and social media have generally been very supportive of that as well. You'll always get people who think there's a better way or another way or it should happen faster or slower. But in, in the main, uh, you know, I've got to congratulate our citizens on the very sensible approach they've taken. Um, but we're a major tourism destination and it's very unusual that we would discourage people from visiting us. But we've had to do that. But at the same time, keep faith with our own citizens that if they adhere to uh, the health um, uh, issues and particularly the social distancing, then they can go about their life and still enjoy things like a walk on the beach uh, as long as they don't get too close. And that, that has been very well received by our local citizens. And I'm sure we'll look forward to receiving our, uh, our valuable tourists uh, again into the future when this is all behind us. And so are you anticipating that the tourist economy, and, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know which percentage of your economy that represents, but I know it's significant. Are you confident that your tourist economy will come back in the, in the third or fourth quarter of this year, or will it be a percentage yeah. of that? Yeah, look, uh, I, I think there'll be a lot of people in Australia who had cabin fever, uh, and they'll want to get out when the restrictions are lifted. Uh, I don't think we'll see a lot of international activity for some time. Uh, therefore, Australians will be looking to holiday at home. Uh, the Sunshine Coast is uh, a very popular destination, particularly for the drive market around Queensland, but also with direct flights coming in from the major cities of Sydney and Melbourne. We'll, we'll be very well placed to take advantage of that. Uh, the fact that our infection rate has been so low, uh, our community being so compliant, uh, I think will encourage people to come and uh, come and see us and enjoy all the great uh, natural aspects of, of our Sunshine Coast. Well, that's good. And, and I hope it plays out that way for you. Uh, and I certainly look forward to getting down there uh, when I can. Um, you know, I was looking in 2018, you were considered, I think, the, the best place in the nation of Australia to invest. Um, and I know that uh, you've been working on an economic resurgence plan. Uh, you know, your economy there was like a lot of Australians economy uh, sort of went through a slump with the commodities uh, dip and so forth. So you, you've spent a lot of time working to build a more creative, diverse economy. Um, can you tell us how that's going and what you can expect or what you're looking at in the near term and whether that's been interrupted by the COVID crisis? Uh, yes. Uh, if we go back to the GFC and our response to that was to recognise that the industries that had served us in the past, namely tourism, construction, retail principally, um, whilst they would remain important industries, they wouldn't be the industries that would lead us into the future. Uh, and we adopted a much stronger focus around health, medical and well-being, education and research, aviation and aerospace, um, uh, knowledge industries, uh, the, the agribusiness sector as a, as a much stronger focus. 
that would be the lead indicators, uh, obviously then serving the retail businesses and the construction business from, uh, from a lag point of view. Uh, and that's been very effective. That, that broadening of our base is seeing about 25,000 jobs created over the last four years, which is pretty significant. Yes. Uh, we've seen strong growth in, in wages at a time where, where other parts of Australia are not seeing strong wages growth. Um, we're certainly building a more competitive economy. Uh, and, you know, we're, not, we're no longer reliant on those industries uh, that can effectively have the rug pulled out from under them uh, off the back of a, a war catastrophe like we're seeing here. Um, now, that, that all goes well for us in, in terms of our comeback. Uh, and, and we've developed a battle plan, if you like, across all councils around Queensland as to how we will ensure we survive and prosper and lead our communities to, uh, to better times. Uh, and I think the Sunshine Coast is very well placed. Obviously, our uh, international broadband submarine cable that, that came ashore just prior to Christmas and is now uh, safely uh, linked to our um, uh, landing station uh, will you know, create a, a new super highway of the future, if you like, for opportunity, particularly connecting us as the closest point of connection in Australia to Asia. Uh, that's been a great investment. Our new international runway, which will open uh, on June 13, uh, so you know, less a little over a month away, um, will also be a strong reinforcement to our community that we are very well placed uh, to capitalise on the future. And whilst times are tough right now, these are investments that will serve our region for the next 50 or 100 years. Um, and uh, they'll serve it well, uh, as will our new uh, central business district in Maroochydore, a 53 hectare greenfield uh, CBD, which again, in an Australian context, is quite a rarity. Is your population still growing? Because I know it was growing at a pretty good clip uh, last time we looked. Yeah, growing, growing much faster than the national average. Yeah. Um, and that will continue because it's a very appealing place to live. Uh, and, and increasingly, people will come here because they're seeing uh, solid growth uh, and development of jobs and industries that has more appeal for what they want to do. And we'll be able to say to people on the Sunshine Coast in business, look, you can do business from here, but you, you can jump on a plane and almost be anywhere in the world as quickly as you can from any other point of departure. Uh, or you can operate in a virtual world and be linked to... Uh, Asia and the US and, and all parts of the world, uh, uh, our objective around developing a digital trade hub off the back of that international broadband submarine cable is advancing. Uh, the emphasis or the attraction it provides for you know, startup industries, uh, startup operations um, uh, is also quite profound. And you know, that's where we're really staking our future. And uh, I think we're in the right space. Yeah, and, and I would think so too. And I, it, it may get busier too because I think people are going to be looking at bigger cities and we're actually doing a, a series of discussions on this coming up about whether we trust enormous density anymore. And so uh, I think a place like yours is, is uniquely positioned. Uh, it seems to be offering the best of, of all the worlds. Um, Mayor Jameson, I know it's early in the morning for you and you've, you've probably got a few things to do today, but um, I, you know I really appreciate you making the time. Is there anything you'd like to say with regard to your top seven status again, two times in a row? Well, look, obviously we're very proud to be recognized uh, as the uh, one of the top seven intelligent communities in the world. And, and I know that that really made our citizens feel quite proud um, and to have that reinforced for a second year in a row uh, is, is certainly very reassuring. Uh, this year, we've got some more competition from Australia with Adelaide also in the top seven, and that's, that, that says good things about down under, if you like. Um, so, we, you know, we're very proud to be uh, a participant. Uh, we think it demonstrates, along with a range of other measures, that our economy, our lifestyle, um, our uh, health and well-being uh, are all being you know, reinforced by the decisions that have been made. Uh, and that lays a platform for us in the future. So I'm, um, I, I'm very proud of our community and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity that the Intelligent Community Forum 
provides for us and the engagement it gives us with other uh, municipalities, uh, big and small, uh, that we can uh, learn from, but also also we can assist. And I and I'd just wrap up by saying again that you know our priority has been about saving lives and saving livelihoods. And uh, I think uh, we're getting to a point where uh, some normality is about to return, and uh, hopefully that can be reinforced through continued good health and happiness. Well, uh, we certainly hope that happens for you because it's a, it's a great place and you have uh, citizens who certainly deserve it. So again, I'd like to thank you uh, for being a part of this today. And uh, I'd like to thank Mayor Mark Jacob, uh, Jameson of the Sunshine Coast for making the time to be with us. Uh, you can learn more about this award-winning community at ICF's website at intelligentcommunity.org. And you can follow him on Twitter at uh, Jameson, that's J-A-M-I-E, S-O-N, Mark, M-A-R-K, and uh, hopefully meet him in Dublin, Ohio in October at the ICF Summit when we bring it there. This No Place But Home series is produced by ICF as a service to its network of intelligent communities around the world. A shout out to our series producer, Matt Owen. Uh, please join us next week for another conversation. And if you want to view prior conversations, which we're having with leading communities around the world during this COVID-19 crisis and experts in the rural sector and uh, other areas, go to intelligentcommunity.org backslash COVID-19 and follow us on Twitter at New Communities and LOU, Lou at ICF. I'm Lou Zaccarella, reminding you that there really is no place like home. Take care.